Well, really, it was when I retired, uh, which was eight years ago. And um, all my career, I'd been able to occupy myself with phonetics, pronunciation, which is a subject I find extremely interesting. And of course, when I was still working, I had students to teach and discuss things with. I had colleagues to discuss things with. And when I retired, suddenly, I didn't have those anymore. And so I decided to talk to the world. So I wrote every day or nearly every day a blog about some phonetic topic that interested me and of course I got responses from people and then we could have a kind of dialogue about these things. Well it's I hope of interest to anybody who like me is fascinated with phonetics and with pronunciation because I like talking about it, reading about it and I'm sure lots of other people do too. Of course I'm thinking particularly of people who deal with phonetics in their everyday life, people like speech therapists, for example, speech and language therapists, or language teachers, or people concerned with acting or training actors, people concerned with teaching foreign languages, particularly with teaching English as a foreign language. Because with all of these people, there's something interesting to say about phonetics. Well, I thought it was a good thing to try and group similar topics. When I was writing it day by day, each day I'd have a new topic, but then I thought if I'm putting it together in a book, I should gather together things that were similar. So, for example, the first chapter is how do you say such and such a word, and it's all about words and names in English, which not everybody pronounces the same way. One of the big things we have to discover about ourselves is that we assume that everybody else talks the way we do, but that's not the case. And each of us has certain idiosyncratic pronunciations, which other people are surprised to hear, and equally we're sometimes surprised to notice how other people say things. Let me give an example. You may know a limerick about a faith healer of Deal, who said, although pain isn't real, when I sit on a pin and it punctures my skin, I dislike what I fancy I feel. Now there you see you've got the words deal and real and feel having to rhyme. But for me, real doesn't actually rhyme with deal and feel. I know it does for most people, and that's one of the things I've discovered. Obviously it did for the person who wrote the limerick. And they perhaps would be surprised that for me, real, meaning genuine, sounds different from real, meaning bobbin. And uh, so one of the things I talk about is that difference, how we're losing the contrast between certain long vowels and diphthongs followed by L and the same vowel or diphthong followed by E, schwa plus L. So equally if we take similarly owl, the bird, and vowel, vowels and consonants. Owl and vowel, I think rhyme for most people nowadays, but again you wouldn't believe it if you looked at what dictionaries say. <laughs>